have to deal with it and face it because your dark side also comes out. And quite often when you get close to an enlightened master, to a true yani, uh, what happens is because there's a lot of light, the light also reflects uh, the person and the dark and the shadows begin to appear. So by being around awakened beings, uh, some of your worst habits uh, or dark sides may come out and pop out. So, because you're close to the light and you can't hide, you cannot hide from it. So far, does anybody have any questions? Before I continue, feel free if you want to unmute yourself and ask me a question, or you can write on the chat box. No questions, nothing so far. Uh, one of the stories of the Yanis that I really enjoy is uh, you can go on YouTube and uh, watch a series of documentaries that David Godman has uh, created about the life of Ramana Maharishi. He's, uh, Ramana Maharishi was uh, born in the late 18th century and then um, around 816, he awakened and became enlightened and he moved to the city of Tiruvannamalai and uh, he stayed there for the rest of his life. Uh, he was the teacher of my teacher. So you can go on YouTube, uh, later on we can post, post it for you here and um, or post it on Facebook. Uh, I've talked about this before and watch there's like eight or nine videos uh, narrated by David Gottman about the life of Ramana Maharshi. And it's very, very interesting. Of, uh, it gives you a taste of who is the Yani and the state of the Yani. Now, there's a lot of stories about different enlightened masters. Um, how many people know about Rumi? Rumi, right? Yeah, Rumi, uh, Jalaleddin Rumi. Uh, he uh, is also known as a poet, but basically, uh, I'm gonna tell you a story about how Rumi met his Satguru, how Rumi met his master, and uh, which, his master's name is Shams. Shams was Rumi's Satguru. Now, Rumi was born in Konya. Konya right now is a part of Turkey, but back in the day, uh, it was a part of the Persian Empire. So Persians, Iranians, claim Rumi is Iranian. And, I'm, and, and the Turks, they claim Rumi is, is a Turk. So anyway, back in the time he was born in Konya, Konya was part of Iran, the Persian Empire. And uh, Rumi was born in a, um, Rumi was born in a um, Brahmin family. Brahmin is a Sanskrit, uh, word of a higher class family and uh, his family were very known they were very wealthy they were this very top-notch class <clears throat> and um, naturally Rumi got initiated in priesthood and and uh, he had interest in in priesthood and he started to studying all the scriptures and literatures 
And uh, for years, I think it was about maybe 40 years old, 45 years old. And for years and years, Rumi was teaching uh, the gospel and of spirituality and had a big following at that time. However, Rumi himself had never had a direct experience of the self. He had never experienced samadhi. He had never gone into this place of extreme deep silence and the oneness with God. But he knew like a lot of different priests or a lot of teachers that they're teaching these things, but their teachings is not coming from a direct experience. It's simply they've read about it, but it's not their own experience and they teach it. And, you know, sometimes they're very good in teaching it, but the teaching is not coming from direct experience. And that's a different story. So Rumi was working on his spiritual book and he was working on this book for about 10 years. And uh, he's sitting at uh, the banks of a river in somewhere in Persia and, uh, and the river's so he's just sitting there and he's finishing his book after 10 years. And he's at the last page, last sentence, is finishing this book, is in the last sentence. And everything's, of course, is hand, handwritten. It's very close. He's just about to finish the book. And as he finishes and writes the last word and ends, an old man in raggedy clothes, you know, weird hair and beard and dirty clothes and walks up to him and he says, young man, I've been watching you for a while and you look very studious and you've been writing and concentrating about putting these marks on this piece of paper. What is it you're writing? What is it that you are so concentrated on? And uh, Rumi, who's a, from a Brahmin family, is dressed very nice and elegant and chic. And he looks at this guy and he's like oh, you know what am i going to tell this guy this guy is illiterate he doesn't know anything what am i going to tell him so he looks at him and says old man mind your own business just just go and uh the old man looks at him again and says, no, I want to know, I'm very curious. What is it that you're writing? What is it that you're doing? Again, Rumi takes a look at him and from just looking at this guy, like, what am I gonna tell this guy? He's illiterate. He says, old man, mind your business. You, you won't understand. You will not understand this. This is too much. And then Rumi, uh, and, and then again, the old man turns around and says, no, I really want to know what you're writing. And by this time, Rumi is like, my father, old man, gentleman, please move on. You don't understand these things. It's not for you. 